The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, folks. We had a few def technical difficulties there kicking off the week. We had the office getting blown out by a little bit of a power surge. Uh, not having to do with Hurricane, what's the name? I should know by now. Is it Ida? Shame on me. Idalia, right? Uh, not having to do with that. Not on our shores yet. It is coming for the Gulf Coast probably Tuesday night. Wednesday may be a bit of an issue here in Florida, but nonetheless, a little bit of a power surge. I think we're back on the air. Uh, do we have my chart? Yeah, I think they got my chart up there. They got everything. We're rocking. We're rolling. Perfect. I see it. We're back live. Thanks to my producer, Al, for getting us back in action. And let's kick it off. We got the S&Ps right now. We are up by 22 points, folks. Uh, let me jump around, recalibrate my charts there. Back to the S&Ps. So we are above Friday action, trading at 44.36 right now in the S&Ps. That's positive by about half a percent. NASDAQ 100, we're positive by seven tenths percent right now as we're jumping around. And give me one second as I'm pulling up some of these settings, folks, as well. There we go. I'm going to brighten things up a little bit. I was looking a little dark there. Uh, NASDAQ 100 up by seven tenths percent above Friday as well. We get the Dow right now above Friday action up 159 points. That's about half a percent in the Russell up by half a percent as well. So you get the S&P, the Dow, and the Russell all up by half a percent. You have the NASDAQ 100 right now up by about seven tenths percent. Bitcoin trading at 26,000 right now. Crude above $80. And look at the spike action on crude, right? Wednesday, we spiked to $77 and change. Thursday, $77 and change. Friday, you had to spike down to almost $78. This morning, we're sitting right at 78 bucks, 79.95 for the price of crude. Gold contract up by about four dollars at 19.43 this morning, folks. If you're thinking about gold, now is a perfect time to go check out the gold report. My dad, Tom O'Brien, he's got a webinar coming up on Wednesday from four till five p.m. Eastern time on the gold market. He's got a new issue that's being published right now as we speak. I think it might be out right now. It's it's not. It's coming out momentarily. A new issue of the Gold Report coming out right now. Great time to check it out. Tom hasn't done a Gold Report subscriber webinar in a few years at least. If you're already a Gold Report subscriber, you're going to gain access, no problem. That was a quick quick segment, folks, because of those technical difficulties. We'll be right back. We'll go over some of the markets. It's Jobs Friday already coming up this week, coming into Labor Day weekend. Lots to talk about. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. 
and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the gold contract right now up by $4. And as I was mentioning there, folks, okay, my dad's got a gold report subscriber webinar. Uh, that was the quickest first segment I've ever had, right? Because we had a little technical difficulty snuck up on me there. But folks, check it out. Okay, he's got a new issue out this morning. If you're going to sign up for it, today's the day to do it because you get the new issue of the gold report issued this morning. You gain access to the subscriber webinar coming up on Wednesday. Now, if you're already subscribed to the Gold Report, okay, you'll see in the note out there for the issue that's published this morning, you gain free access. So I know I got a couple emails this weekend about the promotional email about the Gold Report subscriber webinar saying, hey, I'm already a Gold Report subscriber. Yes, you gain free access. That's what it's for. This webinar is for Gold Report subscribers, period. The way to get in is go check out the Gold Report. And the best deal about it, folks, it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you get the Gold Report for a month. You gain access to the archive, the webinar, the live webinar. It will be archived as well in there if you can't attend live on Wednesday night. And what's going on here, as I say this, right, hadn't really thought it through completely because things are sneaking up on us. Um, we'll see where we go for that webinar in terms of that hurricane, man. But no matter what, the webinar is happening, folks. Even if it gets rescheduled, sign up. You're not going to miss it, okay? The webinar is coming. We'll see what Wednesday looks like. Uh, and let's tease that into the storm. Why not? Uh, our man Z posted in the, in the in the den. He's beat me. You beat me, Z. I had this one ready. I had it queued up. You beat me in the den. Uh, some great analysis as usual in the den. And there's your update as of 7 a.m. this morning. Idalia, and it's coming for the Gulf Coast, man. Tampa looks to be right on the bottom portion of that cone. Hopefully we dodge it. Hopefully everyone dodges it. But boy, it's coming. It looks like it's going to roll up to a Category Three potentially as it hits land. Right now, you're talking about maximum sustained winds of 65 miles an hour. But, folks, it's not going to hit Florida for like 48 hours. And, man, we got some warm waters out there in the Gulf. And as we all know, things can really accelerate when it sits in that Gulf water. So we'll see where we go. I was stocking up a little bit this weekend. If you're around Florida, folks, I've said it before. All right. This is a this is a finance program, right? It's the morning market kickoff. But. Sometimes I just like sharing good information that people need to be reminded of. Make sure you go get some water if you're in Florida, okay? If you have the ability, if you have the funds, there's no reason why you shouldn't have five to seven days of water stored into your house all the time, okay? We learned this stuff during the pandemic a bit during hurricane season. Don't get caught up in the Publix rush where you walk in and everybody's bought all the water out there and you're buying, you know, eight ounce bottles of water to try and get anything that's left on the shelf. Go get some water, go stock up on some some food if you need it. Go make sure you got some batteries out there, right? Uh, if you got a generator, make sure you got some gas, stock up on the gas, because as we know, this thing goes quick. And once it starts accelerating, everything's gone. Don't say, oh, I can wait until the very last second, because that's what everybody says. And if you wait till the last second, it's all gone. But nonetheless, there's the storm. So the cone is coming and it's a wide cone right now. I mean, look at that. Look at that cone. Look how big it is. Think about how many people it varies in terms of where that may hit. But what happens is, man, we got two to three days that are still out from when this thing is going to land. I guess two days would be a fair assessment of when this thing is going to land on the coast. And 48 hours is a long time in terms of how much that can wiggle, whether it's 100, 150, sometimes 200 miles from where they're thinking it could be. Uh, but nonetheless, it is is coming for Florida. And so we'll see. No schools canceled just yet, but we will see. But check out the Gold Report, folks. New issue.
published today. All right, back to the markets. What do we got going on? Where are we going to kick off? We got a few things. We got ECB. We got auto workers. We have China in the press as well. And let's kick things off with growth stocks. Why not? I was listening to a take this weekend about NVIDIA from one analyst. I think it was on Bloomberg. Might have even been Bloomberg last night. Bloomberg Asia. Daybreak Asia. Might have been. Uh, might have just been a weekend Bloomberg. Sometimes I'm driving around. I love listening to music, but I like listening to good analysis. I'll pull up Bloomberg Radio. And they were talking about the valuation in the video right now, okay, in terms of how difficult it is going to be if you go out five or ten years to grow into those multiples of that company. The price action after their earnings should tell you that, okay, because they crushed it out of the park. I've never seen the type of earnings that they delivered the last two quarters, right? If you back it up 90 days ago, my goodness. And yes, you had quite an acceleration. But for them to be under where you were trading at coming into that earnings event, we're at 462 this morning. We're up a bit. Even the market's saying, hey, man, you know, everything is priced into this equity. You take a look at it longer term. OK, you just went from 100 to 500 in less than a year, 100 to 500 in less than a year. Uh, I saw an interesting statistic recently this weekend that the company Palm, I don't even know, Palm Pilot, right? Is, that, is it even around anymore? No, probably not. Uh, the company Palm, in the year 2000, okay, in the year 2000, a little Conan reference for all those that are in the know. The company Palm in the year 2000, and I haven't checked this out. Somebody tell me if I'm wrong, please. I don't even know what Palm, if it still trades. I don't know. We're 23 years later. But in the year 2000, the company Palm was worth more than Apple, NVIDIA, and Amazon combined. Did you hear that? Yeah, a company that we don't even know exists anymore was worth more than Apple, NVIDIA, and Amazon combined. It's amazing how the world can change in 20 years, 23 to be exact, but nonetheless, uh, multiples. Going to be a problem as we go forward, man. Now, here's what I'll say. When NVIDIA was at 342 at the end of 2021, folks, there was a lot of discussion. I remember hearing it rightfully so. If you were looking to short some of these big growth stocks, man, NVIDIA was one of the best ones you could have shorted. The multiples were just bonkers. You traded from 346 down to 108. Okay, and I'm not talking about shorting the GameStop type meme stocks, okay, because we all know that they were going back to nothing eventually. As we have Bed Bath & Beyond basically worthless right now as they're going through their bankruptcy or deal in court but it was a multiple issue and it might be a multiple issue again man as you get an exhaustion top above 500 we're at 460 right now so be careful in this and that's what they're putting out here u.s growth stocks trade is crowded and overvalued said rbc large cap growth trade looks problematic is one way to put it out there nasdaq 100 up 37 percent in 2023 uh Above average valuations, that would put it lightly, man. I'd say we should, it's remarkable we're not even higher, right? I mean, look where we are on this chart. Yeah, you've been below it for many times, but many areas in this chart were above it. The scary part is that you're going back from 2002 to 2008 is where you were above it, and also when you were above it during kind of the post-COVID bubble that we saw many of these equities get into. Uh, growth stocks dominance on the earnings revision front is fading while flows to funds focused on this group of equities had, has turned negative. So there's a few red herrings in there you got to look out for. Uh, they have a price target for the S&P of 42.50. So you're looking for a little bit of a pullback there. About a 3.5% downside is what you're looking for. Nonetheless, you're going to see that and uh, pay attention to it. Why not? We'll jump to Bed Bath & Beyond since I was talking about it. Shareholders left holding worthless stock as bankruptcy hearing approaches. Yeah. Without recovery, the company's 152 million market cap uh, essentially boils down to nothing for shareholders. So be careful placing those bets, folks, because sometimes it's just all going to run out to nothing. Yeah, let's talk a little bit. We'll tease this one as we come into the break here. You see what we got up here, folks? You see what the ads they're serving me? You see the ads they're serving me? You know why they're serving me those ads? Because Halloween's coming, man, and we're getting Tommy some dinosaur costumes. Check it out. We got, uh, what's this one? Is that a pterodactyl? Might be. I think that's a stegosaurus. Yeah. Some shoes as well. But uh, look, look at this, man. I got ads everywhere, man. Pretty remarkable how the internet works, right? Uh, we were checking out dinosaur costumes for Tommy. Over the weekend. There you go. Got a little sidetrack. We got these, these top two right here. It's funny. They know everything, man. Uh, those are the top two that are in the running for Tommy. We got two months until Halloween. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back. We'll talk some student loans. We'll talk some market. 
We'll be right back. Rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S and P up by 22 points right now. It's about half a percent. All the markets, kind of where we kicked off the program. Nasdaq 100 up by about seven tenths percent. You got the Dow up by half a percent. Russell up by about seven tenths percent. Crude above eighty dollars at eighty dollars and two pennies. Gold contract up about two dollars at nineteen forty-one. We jump over to the dollar index this morning. Dollar index. 104.11. We jump over to yields in focus, of course, with Chairman Powell, Jackson Hole on Friday. A little bit of volatility. This morning, we have yields slightly elevated price, slightly lower rates. You're talking about a 10-year. It was 4.2 when I came on the program. It's probably no, it's sitting at about 4.2. So 4.2%, the yield on the 10-year. You go longer picture, man. That could be the story right now. It is the story, right? You're going from 117 down to about 109 and change, chopping around near the lows of last October for that tenure. All right, speaking of interest rates and yield, uh, how about student loans emerging from a deep freeze and borrowers are confused? Never a good deal when you have this type of confusion going on. It's gonna add to the hardships that people are in in terms of they're not even aware of kind of what is going on right now. You had many of these loans we transferred who was servicing them during the time. Uh, yeah, so here's how they explain it, right at the kickoff. Borrowers will start owing interest as of Friday. 
Okay, and that is because that's September 1st, right? No, I guess that just kicks in. That's September 4th. Yes, not September 1st. Wait. No, that's September 1st. I had to calibrate. Yes, it's September 1st on Friday. I think the payments start in October, but you probably owe an interest in September, which is a long time coming, as in it's been off for three years. New payment schedules by email. Everybody misses emails these days, right? Especially people who might not be akin to actively perusing their emails for such important important financial data. I mean, folks, many of us, if you're watching this program, you're probably highly in tune with the news of the day, things going on. You're probably aware of this. There are many people that, fortunately for them, don't have to dive into the, the for their daily job or their just daily happenings, or maybe they're retired, right? You don't have to be as glued to every happening that's occurring in the market like we are if you're watching this program, if you're in the Tiger's Den. It seems like it's kind of common knowledge, not common knowledge to many people for a very reasonable reason, not just because they're you know ignorant or not able to keep up. They focus on different areas of life, okay? So you got four in 10 borrowers loans transferred to a new servicer during the pause that began in March of 2020. It's about half of student loans out there transferred, right? New payment schedules by email, servicers they've never heard of. This is going to be a problem, folks, all right? How big of a problem is the only deal out there? Now, this is the journal. They, they, they kind of cherry pick something here in terms of, you know, there's many borrowers that aren't in this situation. But they have a woman, a 75-year-old, former nonprofit employee. I mean, this is like a stereotypical. Uh, she's got 14 grand left that she's been paying for 20, 20 years. Is that grad school? Yeah, graduate school loans, paying them for 20 years. I mean, this is what you want to avoid, folks. You don't want to get graduate school loans when you're 50 or 55 and you got 15 grand left after paying them for 20 years. Um, hadn't paid for three years, called the servicer, right? Forgiveness options, payment declines, but getting through to a human is difficult. You think it's a problem? Yeah, the whole country right now. What do we got? 27 million people or something like that's the number. It's going to be very difficult for everybody to reach a person to get through to somebody. You got new services and all this starts next month, man. And it's going to be a hamper on disposable income to say the least. They're talking about loan services, as I mentioned here. Um, yeah. And as I say, there's going to be some backlogs to put it lightly, man. And this is going to weigh on the economy. I'm sure the Fed is monitoring that and we'll see where that goes. All right, back to a little discussion of water temperatures in focus with Hurricane Adalia bearing down on Florida's Gulf Coast. Uh, heating waters force change in industries that depend on the ocean. Now, this is a long read. I'm going to post this in the den right now. If you have an ability, you check it out from the journal. Uh, I'm not going to be able to go through all of it, but interesting stuff, man. Of course, they're talking about areas where there, it's Maine's lobster men, right? They're talking about kelp farmers. You got to be able to be agile folks and if boy if you are a fisherman fisherwoman wherever you are uh there's a lot going on in the globe right now in terms of where certain fish are spending their time because the temperatures are changing the mediterranean sea reached a record of 87 degrees in july what does that do that attracts different fish than normally come in you got jellyfish and lionfish threatens the coral reefs we got a big problem with the coral reef down in florida right now in terms of the temperatures that are there. And really what I wanted to get to is just one chart in here, but the summer surface temps between July and September in the Gulf have risen four times the global ocean average since 1982. The entire region is warming more rapidly than 97% of the ocean surface because of overall climate warming and shifts in local currents. Folks, this is the journal, okay? This is not some liberal rag. This is the Wall Street Journal, okay? Now, for climate change gets political, which is a bummer. Uh, check out this chart. Average sea surface temperature departure from historic norms for the previous 30 days. Here's the U.S. I mean, it's just hot everywhere, man. But look at the heat that they have in the Northeast. There's New York. Okay, so you're really going above the Northeast there up to Canada. All right. But looking in the Pacific, and this is what they were talking about, the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, where they talk about it. It was up here. Um, Yeah. As I mentioned, there's almost too much to go through here too quickly, which is why I put it up there. 
Yeah, salmon's a big problem as you're talking about, Duffy. So lobsters in Maine, 388 million. Lobster catch has moved 162 miles northward and nearly 70 feet deeper over the past 50 years. Think about that, right? So the lobsters are on the move, man. They're moving north and they're moving deep if you're going fishing for them. The Maine lobster catch has fallen 26% since a record catch of 132 million pounds in 2016. Now, you'll say that's only 2016. Uh, seven years ago, man, and time flies and things change, and there's always going to be variance, folks. There is always going to be variance. Remember that, okay? So you're always going to be cherry picking um, if you want to any statistic because there's always going to be variance. But this is what has me most worried about the hurricane season this year because we got warm waters, and it seems like the articles just keep popping up, man. So check that out if you can. They go over a bunch of different stuff in there. Um, but it matters, folks, and it's mattering for the fishing. It's mattering for people changing what they're doing in terms of maybe you used to be a lobster fisherman and now you're producing kelp. Um, and again, I would have pulled that up. It's somewhere in this article. It's a great article, just kind of talking about what's going on. I was looking for that kelp one, but nonetheless, check that out in the Tiger's Den if you get a chance. All right, we talked student loans. We talked about the waters. Yeah, so, I mean, look at this, right? Look at these articles, folks, okay? This is from the journal this morning. We're talking about home insurance. It's all related, okay? This is all related to a certain degree. I don't advise you on foregoing home insur homeowner's insurance, folks. Um, you know, you can make the case if you have the type of cash available, you can self-insure, but many people who are making these decisions do not have the ability to self-insure and they're just straight gambling. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back. We'll talk about this. We're going to talk a little bit about the jobs number that we have coming on Friday. Stay tuned, folks. Positive markets to kick it off. We'll be right you back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question that I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit direction 
precisioninvestments.com. A funds prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. S&Ps up by 24 points right now. We just spiked to a high. Let's put it back to a one minute so you can see that acceleration right out of the gate at 930. You drive from 44.34. We almost make it up to 44.48. And we've given up basically the gains we had in the last 12 minutes as the market was open. How about the Dow catching a bit? Up by about three quarters percent right now. 34,636. That's minute. Let's put it back to a 10 minute chart. You see the Dow making it right back up to Thursday's high. S&P right now, well off those highs still. That would bring us up to 44.80. When you talk about where we were Thursday night, you look at the NASDAQ 100, you're talking about 15,400. So you see the divergence there, right, in terms of how high we were coming in after the NVIDIA earnings. You spike to 15,400 before the whole market gives it up. Meanwhile, you get the Dow actually back to the highs, and you got the Russell back to the highs as well. Russell catches a bid up by 1.2% right now. Pretty remarkable. All right, and back to some of what they're talking about for home insurance here. Now, they talk about here that some people who have the ability to financially withstand the loss are self-insuring, and that's one thing, okay? Just one second. Okay. Okay. Uh, what they get into here, though, folks, is people who are not able to, all right? You have people, you you know, if you don't have a mortgage, that's where you can really get away with not having insurance. Because you got a mortgage, they're going to make you have insurance to make sure that you don't lose a house you don't even own, right? But then they have people in here. This is the last part I wanted to bring up here. 12% of homeowners in the U.S. don't purchase homeowners insurance, and about half of them have annual household income of less than $40,000, okay? And there's a lot that goes into this, so be careful if you're making decisions like this. Now, here's what I will say as well, though. I just recently, Friday, uh, come out of my house, middle of the day, I was gonna run a quick errand, and I got a flat tire. Bought my vehicle almost five years ago now. Yeah, April of 2019. Can't believe I have to go back. That's almost five years ago? That's almost five years ago, yeah. April of 2019. Uh, and I don't think I've used tire insurance yet. And I did get tire insurance at the time, okay? And I had to pull up my contract because I was going to use it this time. And over five years, the cost of that tire insurance, and these are expensive tires, they're run flat tires. Um, they run like 350, 375 a pop, right? They're run flat tires. So you get a flat, you can go about 50 miles at 50 miles per an hour or less. But nonetheless, that tire insurance cost me $1,740 over five years. I think I've used it. That's the first time I used it. That saved me 350 bucks. So I got hosed. And I said to myself, you know what? I think I might self-insure my tires going forward. That's a much different deal than home insurance, folks. I've said it before. If you're having trouble with home insurance, at least do some due diligence. And if you're in Florida, get yourself a citizen's quote because you'd be shocked sometimes at the differences. But this is playing out all over the country, man. Uh, in Florida, it's, of course, dramatic to say the least. Um, but yes, all over the country. Um, but a sad deal when you start seeing people that can't afford it deciding not to insure their house. I mean, you have one person in here that tells the story. Yeah. One gentleman lived in his home for 25 years. He's estimated he saved $50,000 over that time. Folks, that can be one bad storm rips through like that. Okay. Um, yeah, nonetheless, these stories popping up everywhere. All right, let's talk a little bit of auto workers right now. We talked about this before. And here's all I'll say, keep an open mind, folks. I've talked about it before. You're going to see these things and the knee jerk reaction is going to be, oh, come on, 32 hours. What are they going to do? They're going to be, why can't we have a 32 hour work week? I mean, that's right. And I'm not saying we should, but why can't we? 
I would love to see some really great arguments and debates from both sides about how they think forcing everybody to subscribe to the 40 hour work week versus the 32. Where did the 40 hour five day work week come from? I'm on the, I'm on the soapbox a little bit, right? But it's important to question the norms as you go through life, folks, okay? And I'm, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe that would dramatically decrease GDP, growth, all that stuff. Let's hear those arguments, okay? I don't think it would. I don't. But that's my perception. But we've come to accept the five-day work week when there's no reason why a four-day work week wouldn't have been akin to the same deal, you'd still make the case that you work more than you rest. You work four days, you rest three days. You work four days, you rest three days. Where did it become you work five days, you rest two days, right? Why is that the article that defines whether you're aggressive or you're lazy, right? So just keep that stuff in mind when you hear this stuff coming out, man. These car makers, they've made tens and tens and tens of billions of dollars recently, uh, and now their workers are going for it. And we're seeing a shift here in terms of what's happening. And folks, you need livable wages, okay? This unemployment rate we have these days, it is based off the fact that many people make a non-livable wage. Very easy to have a low unemployment rate when you have a non-livable wage that is defined by that because many workers are employed with non-livable wages going forward. Uh, but boy, this one's gonna be a brawl. Uh, the news was out, was it Friday, right? That I think they were talking about? Let's see, yeah, it was Friday when this thing spiked to 11.58. We're back to 12.05 for Ford. But I think that news came out when they had the vote and that they may be spiking, um, striking, excuse me, not spiking, as early as September 15th. Yeah. All right, let's jump around to see how some of the FANG stocks are doing. Just give me one second here, folks. Okay, Amazon shares down 80 cents right now. We're trading at 132.45. You got Apple shares right now in the positive, but pulling back on the open as well. We jump around to some of the banks. Bank of America this morning, up by about nine tenths percent. JP Morgan, up by about three quarters percent right now. We jump over to Citi. Citi down about seven tenths percent. Wells Fargo shares catching a bid, up by about 1.3 percent. We jump over to the dollar index right now, DXY. Sitting at 104.80 right now in the dollar, and let's keep our eye on yields as well. Yields backing off a bit in price. And what are we talking about right now? 4.21. We got a lot going on in this market, man, as we come into Labor Day weekend and jobs numbers on Friday as well. All right, let's see what else we got pulled up there. We talked about the auto workers a bit. Yeah, let's talk a little bit of yields. I mean, it's amazing how many of these stories focus on the same things, right? Where are yields going right now, right? Where are yields going? Most importantly, we come into jobs numbers on Friday, which define everything. But you're talking about a repricing to a certain degree. Folks, this is not how the debt's supposed to work. You are supposed to issue debt in bad economic times and pay off that debt in good economic times. That is the most worrying fact of everything going on right now. That's not what's happening at all. We have 3.5% unemployment, stocks are through the roof, AI is taking over, and we have deficits running at record levels. So the yields are paying attention, man. Um, and I bet they are gonna be paying attention as we go forward, because something's gotta change, and 4.2% doesn't seem like that bad of a deal, considering how we come to a cliff every so often about paying our bills. All right, folks, one more segment, S&P's up by 26. Don't forget about my dad's gold report. Check it out, new issue out this morning on the front page of TFNN. You can sign up, 30-day money-back guarantee. Go get it done, we'll be right back. With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question that I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. 
This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets hanging out pretty much where we kicked off the program. You got a little bit of a pullback in the NASDAQ 100. We're sitting now up by about four tenths percent. You have the Dow catching a little bit of a bid right now, up by about eight tenths percent. And the Russell really catching a bid as we're up 1.2 percent right now. You jump over to that gold contract, folks. As I mentioned, don't forget about the gold report subscriber webinar Wednesday, folks. New issue out today. Check it out. If you've never checked out the Gold Report, man, great time to do it. My dad's jazzed about it. Hasn't done a webinar in some time. Uh, and even if we have some storm problems, all right, we're going to get that webinar going around Wednesday. We'll see Wednesday night as the storm looks a little rough. But don't delay. Sign up. We got a new issue out for the Gold Report today. Uh, yeah, and he is primed and ready. And we'll see where gold goes. You take a little bit longer term picture. That gold contract, we're well off the highs of what, 2086, 2085 was the high back in May. We're sitting in 1945. You've been chopping around at this area, folks, for basically three years, right? Let's back it up even further than that. Pretty remarkable. You come up to the highs we had in 2011, and that's basically where we've been chopping around for a three-year period. Uh, and we'll see where we go from there, to say the least. All right, let's check around to some of the other stocks, some of the airlines. You got American. Up a bit, up 1% this morning. Delta Airlines up a bit, up 1% this morning. We jump to the cruise companies. Carnival up by about 4 tenths percent right now. Norwegian up by about 9 tenths percent right now. We check in on some of the Magnificent 7. NVIDIA gives it up a bit as well. Be careful, man. Okay, be careful getting into NVIDIA at these prices, folks. We're $70 off of the highs that we saw coming into the day after their earnings event, we're a solid $50 off where this thing was when it just opened, okay? And we are $40 off where this thing was hours after the open in terms of the stop, the pain. Um, yeah. Tesla shares, 
giving it up on the open. We're flat now after being up to 245. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He is coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. We got our man Steve Rhodes. We got Fast Market from the Schwab Network. Our man Larry Pezzavento is feeling good. His voice is back. He's going to be live. My dad, Tom O'Brien, live to, from 3 till 4. Folks, stay safe out there. Have a great Monday. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Stay tuned for Basil. And remember that gold report, front page of TFNN. Have a great one, folks.